Yo po, do 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 yo po. You only podcast once with Jevin Daly and Sarah Joey. We can always decide where to start, given when started. It started. <laughs> Well, everyone, welcome to Yopo 3. We're sitting here in the Grind Coffee Roasters in Bluffton, which is our favorite place to record Yopo. And as a result... (laughs) Jason Hazel just walked in. Jason Hazel, Hazel Digital Media, first sponsor of the day. (laughs) He's giving us a heart and his hair looks glorious. So for those of you who are listening in the... In the audience who are not from Bluffton, South Carolina. His shoulders look massive today. Yeah, so I think Jevin might have a man crush on that. Ooh. Oh, we got other onlookers now, too. Uh Uh-oh. Oh, they think it's funny. Guess what, though? We think you're funnier. We think you're funnier. We think. We think or we know? We think. We think. We think about it all. We think you're freaky and I like you a lot. (laughs) So let's paint paint the sonic landscape of where we are here at the grind. So we're in a room. It has some nice French doors. And I don't know if you noticed, but there's a there's some sort of bolt, so you can't close the doors. I think it's just because the door next to it is not closed the right way. That thing's new. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. It's a it's a it's obstructing. It's obstructing. We'll investigate further later. <laughs> That's neither here nor there, especially in the the course of this conversation, for sure. I have a feeling we're going to investigate a lot of things today. Yeah, per usual. Dig deep into the... I mean, maybe not as deep as we did last time. Yeah, it got pretty, it got pretty dark and stormy there well, for a second. I but mean, not like in the fun cocktail kind of way, just in a a little bit of a sad way. That was before the holidays, though. It was. It was. Uh, that was post worst Christmas ever. No, it was pre. I mean pre. Yes. And now we're in the. Well, I mean January and February. Can. Be, dark. So dark. That's why we're here. We're here today to talk to you about that. How to avoid the physical, mental, and emotional darkness that sometimes comes with winter. And I actually had a conversation with a friend about this yesterday, and she laughed a little bit because we live in this beautiful kind of tropical environment here on the coast of South Carolina. And generally, it's not really that cold for that long here. But I feel like the fact that it gets very dark here very early still, still puts you in that winter mindset, even if it's not that cold. Well, I mean, this morning I had to, um, I had to use my Juice Hive gift certificate. Thanks, Dad. Thanks, Juice High, for sponsoring the podcast. <laughs> I had to use my card to oh. scrape off my window. That's so funny because the last time I had to scrape my window, I used a Java Burrito gift card. Thank you, Java Burrito, for sponsoring this podcast, by the way. What up, Hilton Head? Hey, uh, if you're one of our listeners on Hilton Head, let us know. Drop us a line. You can drop Sarah a line at uh, SJ by the Sea on Instagram. Instagram. I'll spell that out for you because it's spelled phonetically. E S S. J A Y S E A. Because right. I live by the sea, as we just mentioned. You do, Coastal and it's, South it's, Carolina. It's Pig Latin, right? Pig Latin? No, it's not Pig Latin. S J. Oh, it's, it's my, just S J. It's my oh, initials. God. Oh my gosh! Uh, Welcome. This is like when I realized that Hilton Head was shaped like a shoe. This is when you realize that. Jevin looks at things and doesn't really think about what he's looking at. (laughs) But I feel like anyone who's listening probably either, if you're a first-time listener, maybe you don't know this about him, but you shouldn't be surprised if you are not a first-time listener. Well, unfortunately, it's part of my magic. It is. The Jev Madge. Which brings us to the three Ps. The three Ps. Can we just talk about the three Ps really quickly? Mm, Let's wait a second to talk about that, I think. Oh, okay. Because I was going to talk a little bit more about how 
You know, we discussed last time that we were going to maybe record this at a bar, but mm. Mm. Jevin and I have talked multiple times about how we are coffee friends and not beer friends. Well, also... The vibe just isn't as good loud, sometimes. Yeah, loud. loud. Too many interruptions. This that, side room here is an ideal situation. Well, this is. If you want to have a meeting or if you want to um, come, maybe even have like a little birthday party. I don't know. You think a birthday party could happen? No, that's, that's weird. Maybe what a meeting. Of, what kind of birthday party can you envision in this room? Maybe more like planning a... Uh, planning a birthday party? No, planning um, a... Baby uh, shower? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was just making... I'm going to paint the <laughs> sonic landscape, what I was just doing right now was I was making the motion of, I have a baby in my stomach. I am pregnant. Did you ever see that movie Junior with Arnold Schwarzenegger and I, Danny DeVito? I didn't, but I know Arnold was pregnant. Yes. <laughs> they were both pregnant, weren't they? <laughs> oh, my God. No, maybe not. not I, don't, I, do n I have no recollection of what the premise is of that movie other than there's a pregnant man in it. Well, it's Arnold. One of my... Arnold. One of my biggest man crush. That's not it. That sounded more like Dana Carvey doing it. Yeah, it did. Totally did. But that's okay. I mean, that's kind of what impressionists do is they... Sort of make it their own? Yeah, exactly. Definitely. I'll be back. I'll be back. I'll be back. I don't know. There's people... There was a, there was a girl I was watching the other day on... Uh, not Dana Carvey, but who's the guy who has the new show? Um, not Dana Carvey. He did the church lady. Dana Carvey did the church lady. Okay, he didn't do the church lady. He did the goodbye. Bye. I can't. I can't believe I can't remember his name right now. I feel like that's Dana Carvey too. No. Uh, bye bye. No, it's not. It's the little comedian. Okay. Rob Schneider. Mm. Chris Kattan. Saturday Night Live. Th both of those people are on Saturday Night Live. I know. Chris Live. Kattan was Mango. Mango. <laughs> 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 My gosh, we're really digging back into the 90s here. Always. Hey, 90s kids, are you going to be excited about this? Or is it only going to be exciting if it's things that were born or things <laughs> that were created after you were born? Hmm. That's a funny thing to me. I watch this guy's show all the time now. Something After Dark, and he has comedians on there, and they just rip on everything. That sounds like something you would like. I know. I love it. Well, we'll, we'll come back to that later, maybe. Uh, but anyway, this girl did her impersonation. They were, doing, they were, they were holding up cards of, of like famous people, and they had to do impersonations. And she just went, and he was like, Arnold. He knew right away. <laughs> That's awesome. It was pretty funny. <clears throat> you didn't have to be there. I didn't have to be there. No, it was, it was funny. Like no, that. I feel he's universally funny. And you know what's the most <laughs> universally funny thing about Arnold Schwarzenegger? He's a conservationist? Uh, no, a little <laughs> bit. Pulling back from that, <laughs> that he was the governor of California. California. How can you even, I mean, can you even imagine? California. We've had some crazy political situations, I would argue. And we're not going to go too deep into that because uh, we just lost a follower <laughs> uh, no we just lost three no matter <laughs> no matter what side of the aisle you fall on i just think it's very funny that it's the american dream though but i also think it's funny when people are surprised when we vote for celebrities because <laughs> it's not like it's ever been the first time that you mean like when it. chuck norris became president that was weird oh my gosh do you remember that no do you remember when John Wayne was president? I remember when John Wayne was president. John? <laughs> Cowboy. <laughs> My dad always does these horrible John Wayne impersonations on stage, and no one laughs. And then I say really quickly, hey, does anyone, uh, does anyone know what my dad's talking about? And everyone goes, everyone, Aww. everyone shakes their head like this. Why do you, you always dress him down? It's so sad. It's funny, though. It's funny except to him. That's true. Just like when I use the microphone to call people out sometimes at my little music things. You're just Jevons? Well, or just any, like, a thing. Like and then someone... Gig concert? I wouldn't, yeah, I'd call him just like a... Call him a shift. 
Going to do a shift tonight at Woody's. Yeah. See you tonight. Except your shifts are 100% shorter than anyone who actually works there. They are. Those guys show up, and they they start marrying those ketchups. Catsup? You say catsup or ketchup? Ketchup. No one says catsup. <laughs> if you say catsup out there and you're listening. By the way, thank you, Captain Woody's, for your sponsorship. Thank you, Heinz. Thank you, Heinz. Thank you. Actually, we're a Hunts family. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Ew. Just I've kidding. heard that. I remember a long time ago, somebody said, you know, like rats fall in those ketchup vats and they just churn them up in there. No, that is that's one of those things that people share on Facebook. And it's shared <laughs> it's from not true. It's shared from a website that you have to really question because it's like healthnews.org. Yeah. Well, I think I think rats have fallen into catsup. Oh, yeah. Vats. But you have to understand the political underworkings of regulations. There are so many regulations. Yeah, we're but we're not living yeah. in we're not living in the jungle by Upton Sinclair <laughs> anymore here but if in you the have United enough, States. If you have enough money though, now I'm pointing at Sarah with all five fingers. I'm like. trying to teach I'm trying to <laughs> teach Jevin about public speaking and also <laughs> how he communicates with other people because sometimes when he gets very passionate about something there's a lot of finger pointing, which can be kind of aggressive. It's it well it's me it's rude. Agro dad. Right. He comes out. Yeah, that's my name. Wear it out if you want. If you're a fan of uh dad jokes, don't let us know. Why? I, I love dad know. jokes. I don't know. Okay. Whatever. So anyway, back to Arnold. You know, what I wanted to say really quickly about Arnold was my first exposure to Arnold was um it might have been Okay, was it Running Man? Was Running Man my first exposure to Arnold? No. My first exposure to Arnold was when I started to train Gavin in high school to become the strongest person to ever live on Hilton Head. Natural. Okay. I just said natural, though. Natch. That nat strength. Well, I mean, you know, hey, some of y'all out there, it'll all come out in the wash, taking them extra vitamins yeah you know what i mean mm -hmm. you, i think you know what i mean those vitamins that make you extra extra angry too swole yeah what was the who was the wrestler that offed his whole family on a roid rage chris benoit yes oh my god how did i recall <laughs> I that know. so quickly that was good there's and so many tragic wrestling stories superfly though. snooker superfly snooker why and then there's gator rogowski who was a skater who was definitely not on a roid rage when he killed his girlfriend, but I think he was on meth. My question is, have they done CTE studies on wrestlers as well? Because You mean for, for the concussion thing? Yeah, because mm. it seems like Wait, they you, have similar... Do you think wrestling's real? <laughs> I mean, it, it's a physical it is. performance, it regardless is. of whether it's real or not. It's choreographed, If obviously, you're picking up Hulk Hogan, even if you are Andre the Giant... I think their muscles are real. Yeah. I mean, there's a there's a friend of ours around here, Donnie. What's up, Donnie? Who says, if I can touch it, it's real. Mm. And I think the, the exact quote was, if I can touch them. It, was he referring to breasts? Well, I don't know why he took it there. Well, you... Th I feel like this podcast is, is over today, guys. Guys, listen. Why? Thank you for listening. It's not like children are listening I'm to Sarah, this. I'm Sarah Smutty Sarah J. Oh, just God. took it in. <laughs> I just, for those of you who can't see me right now, which is all of you, I just rolled my eyes because... All of you. <laughs> let me... <laughs> I had to go into the little jazz there. You know what, though? I think that doing a podcast... Ooh, that sounded kind of cool. That was a coffee cup being dropped onto a marble coaster. Doing a podcast, though, I feel like is a really great way to avoid getting too down in the wintertime. What do you think? Or yeah, something similar? That's good. A creative that's pursuit? Good. That's good. Well, we've talked about a few things about how to avoid those winter blues or purples. Maybe you're, in, maybe you're more into perps. But the way I look at it is, going back to my first Jevcast where I said, don't lose the kid in you. Go outside. I'm not saying run around. I mean, go for a walk. 
look at those birds out there. Those flowers, like we were, we were talking about that track Bobby Magarasi produced for me, and you said you liked the flower in the photo. Mm-hmm. I took that. I figured. It's beautiful. I mean, there's a lot of things around here. People say, oh, I want to go to Madagascar. Mach- I don't know why I always talk about Machu Picchu. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's, is it on your bucket list to go there? It's definitely on mine. It is. What do you yeah. want to do? You want to take a picture with like one of those alpacas with dreadlocks? <laughs> <laughs> no, I want to go hike on Machu Picchu. I don't think you really can anymore though, because it's too in much a garbage. State of, state of crumbling. Too much garbage. Thanks a lot. No, I Thanks mean it's like sponsor. ancient, so oh, it is? I don't think oh. it's safe to oh. hike on it. Oh, but well. There's a lot of beautiful birds here. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of beautiful flowers here. There's a lot of nature. You know, aren't you know like Andy has the power lines, for example. Yeah. He has his power lines, Andy Pitts. Thank you for your Patreon sponsorship, Andy. Thank you. It's it's every dollar counts. Every dollar counts, indeed. Thank you. Even though we don't have a page, Patreon Patreon right now, Jevin but, you know. is going to get it uploaded to iTunes eventually. But Jevin is. Yeah, you I'm have the, the iTunes. Account. I'm the producer of this show. Uh, Literally, that's what a producer does is make sure oh, that stuff God. gets done. Clark Hummel, please help us. Clark, Paige and Clark. Clark's out there. He'll Hummel. Listen. Hummel. Back to the beauty, though. See, don't you think that around here, which, again, we're in coastal South Carolina, you it gets kind of... You can go to the beach, too. Go yeah. Ahead. It gets kind of brown and brownish in the winter. Brown frown. But... Much like a person, you got to have a break from all that green, green energy. You know it's what like I mean? You, it's, it's, it's like too much filet mignon. Yeah, it's restorative to have the winter time when you have a little bit of a break from also being up and on all the time. I saw a really cool meme this morning from I Got Pudding Brain, my boy in Nashville. And it was a woman on top of a chair, and she was looking down at a bug, and she was terrified. Mm-hmm. And she just said, the meme said something that I can't remember, but it was something to the effect of these little things are just little speed bumps, you know, and you'll see. It's just a little thing. You might think it's a big thing. You might get really freaked out, but it's just a little thing. And I think... And sometimes the really big things become littler and littler as time goes on. Ladies, if you think size matters... (laughs) <laughs> Hit up SJ by the sea and let her know. Hey, I've heard a lot of people. I've heard. I feel like I've heard a lot of people saying lately, like, "No, it's all how you use it." Okay, fair enough. I thought we were not being smutty, though. I'm not talking. I was talking about so- a sword. I was <laughs> picturing. A sword. I was picturing like you know those, you know on on we those things you hit. I'm, can you tell everyone what, what I'm doing right now? It looks like he's stabbing someone. To but be I'm honest, I'm hitting with the with the this. this oh, the like wee a giant. Thing. Oh, the um. A giant. I don't know what it's. It called. looks like a noodle, but it's really big, and you're hitting each other with it, and you're bam, oh, bam, yeah. bam, and then you knock each other off. Yeah. I think like an can... American Gladiators. Correct. Yeah. Shout out to Ice. Shout out to what were some of their names? I can't remember. One was like Saber or right. something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Turbo. <laughs> right. Just like breaking. I just, just like made those bro- up. No, I know. I feel but like they could be true. Oh, no, though, right? no, they are. If you remember, <laughs> if you're listening right now and you remember any of the names of any of the... Yeah, we're recording. <laughs> I know. I was now not actually looking at that. What is, what is the fear of the podcast not being recorded? What is that phobia Well, called? actually, I was talking with Barry Kaufman, who's a local um, copywriter around here. Thank you, Barry, for Thank your Thank you, Kaufman copywriting right i'd say it wrong every time i'm really sorry barry it's kind of like it's kind of a tongue twister but i was talking to him the other day and he said the pedantic part of me doesn't really understand how you can record multiple podcasts called yopo which stands for you only podcast once right but i think that's therein lies the joke of the podcast i would argue if you know what the word pedantic means let him know let Barry know. Don't let us know. I don't even... I'm pedantic. Let's not go there. Jeez. Boring. Barry, you're not boring. I don't know what she's talking about right the now. The word. <laughs> Gosh. Don't put words in my mouth. Besides pedantic. 
Ooh, that's a chewy word. Yeah, chewy. We we were and we were talking uh, before when we were talking this morning about meeting here. You said your voice was a little groggy. Yes. And I gave you some tips, vocal warm ups. So if you're ever sick, right? And it then, worked. And then what would the next one be? Like a scale, almost. Right. But you don't have to do it loud. You can also just do it like this. Because it takes a lot more breath control to sing soft than it does loud. Everything soft is hard. <laughs> you just blew my mind with that right now. You just blew my mind. Show them how, tell them how I look right now. You look wistful AF. Stately. Stately? Sure. I don't know that anyone's ever referred to you in that term before, but... Thank you. I don't know that that was a compliment either. It wasn't, I know. Which is fine. When I first watched Pumping Iron, Arnold said... Uh, is this uh, no. whole podcast going to be about Arnold My, Schwarzenegger? I'm sorry. Franco Colombo said, Go to California. It's like a place where you'll never get there. And then when they finally did get to California... Um, and started training at Gold's Gym. Those guys, I mean, Franco, his chiropractic practice exploded. And their muscles were, exp their muscles were exploding, too. And they met great guys like Louis. Who's Louis? Louis Ferrigno. Oh, the Louis. Hulk? Louis, what's wrong with your oil? Louis... Sarah is on her phone right now, which is one of my pet peeves. And everybody I was at, I was looking for something we talked about. Oh, Louis, that's not good oil. You need more oil. You, oh, you look like something Michelangelo cut out. Look at you. These are all quotes from. I feel like pumping iron. Do you think that it's a supportive environment for men? Watching bodybuilding. No, pumping iron together. Uh, you mean like if you're both in the gym and you're wearing like really skimpy tank tops and you're like kind of like flexing your tricep like... No, but like emotionally ah. supportive. <laughs> emotionally supportive. To have a training partner? Yeah. It's always good to have a training partner. Well, you were just talking about how you helped Gavin become the bulkiest natural man on Hilton Head. You know, what was so terrible about that is that he got so big and so strong and I remained like... I was like the fitness champion looking kind of body mm -hmm. where like people were like, yeah, Jeff, I mean, yeah, you're, what, what's wrong with you? Why aren't, why aren't you getting big? Like, and then here, here would come, Gavin would come lumbering. I think lumbering is a good, isn't yeah. that what elephants do? But I think that's kind of your mode. And <sighs> This is Gavin breathing. I was about to say hall. something really nice about you and Sorry, you had to make ahead. it weird. Sorry, no, no, no. I was just a person. I was going to say, yeah. I feel like you are... Just a champion in general. You champion others' talents and causes and things like that. I just think we all love it. Love what, specifically? We all love hearing, like, just a little compliment. For sure. And I think that if you're out there and you didn't tell... You know, like I'm driving my daughter to school and I'm like, what do you, how's school been going? You know? Fine. Yeah, she doesn't, she, I don't like yeah. school. I don't care. This is yeah. what seventh graders love saying. Seventh I don't graders care. and eighth graders. Four, 40 seventh graders. <laughs> Whoa. Is that what I say? I don't yes, care. Yes, I do. He, Jevin <laughs> does say he does not care about things, which drives me crazy because it's not true. I don't even care about what you're saying right now. Right, exactly. I, I say I don't care a lot. You do. Well, sometimes. I, I do. I think my issue with it is that you say you don't care when you do care about something. Well, I think I get my feelings hurt when... It's funny, but even when someone says something like... Uh, and this is, just, this is just me talking on a podcast called Yopo. When someone says... Hey, have you ever seen uh, those 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 guys play the so and so? And I don't, man. Come, on. are you serious, man? You think they're good? <laughs> but then a month later, I'm 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 sharing a song of theirs or something on Facebook. Or you probably just have to come to it in your own time. 
I have to do that with a lot of things too. Anyone who says, oh, well, you don't watch so-and-so. Oh my gosh, doesn't everyone watch that? That automatically makes me not want to watch something, which is very contrarian, but I don't know. I just have to come. I'm not saying that I won't like it. I'm just saying that I have to come to it in my own time. Don't you feel like you come from a place that's like, (sighs) I heard Ryan Adams cover album of 1989 by Taylor Swift mm-hmm. before you did. Before Father John Misty, Avia never thought of it. Before I did? No, I mean, <clears throat> I was talking, I was being you. Oh. I was. This is me being Sarah Joey. Oh, okay. Yes, I've heard Ryan Adams' cover of Taylor Swift's album, 1989. I mean, yeah, and I don't want to listen to it ever again. Which is fine. Well, no, I mean, but don't, isn't there a part of, uh, isn't there a part of hip culture... Or being, or or, where you, if if someone else has seen it, you don't want to see it. If someone else has heard it, you don't want to you don't want to hear it. I mean, not necessarily. It just depends. Did you just see someone else you knew? I did. I saw a dog named Benji. <gasps> oh, so exciting! Clark another, Hummel. Clark another and... dog named Clark. Oh, that was my dog. Oh, okay, got it. Well, he is. I mean, he's We're a man. On the same page. He is. He's a man. Therefore, he's a dog. Men or dogs. I shout out George Carlin. I think. Sure. Why not? Well, I mean, it's easy to take care of a man. Wouldn't you rather spend your time in the winter? Is that your heart? Wouldn't it be cool if your heart beat like that? It would be, but most of the time, your heart just beats like this. It's like it's like human <laughs> jock jams. <laughs> I wish my heart beat like that. Doesn't though. My father did a lot of that kind of stuff in the car all the time. Mm-hmm. He would always like he was a drummer in the car. Yeah. And I've never seen him play the drums. Hmm. But I remember growing up like, man, the way he like air drums. You yeah. know, I th- I think. There needs to be more air drum contests and less air guitar contests. I would agree because don't you think air drumming is more interesting than so air guitar? Cooler. So much cooler. Yeah. How many windmill, how many Pete Townsend, is it called windmilling? Sure. I think so. And then what? You're going to make those. Ha, did guitar we talk fingers? about guitar faces? Have we talked about guitar faces? Oh, John Mayers is the worst. <laughs> I just want to make sound effects when he's like. We <laughs> have it. We haven't talked about guitar faces, but <laughs> when you listen to certain songs, your face turns into something completely <laughs> different, and it's very funny. Oh, my God. <laughs> Probably. Well, I mean, you get... I think that when you hear something, your mouth gets going, and your mouth... It's really your mouth. Okay. You start... Now you're turning into Sly Stallone over there. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Adrian! There was a road in, on my vacation I just went on with my kids, and it was called Rocky Face Lane, and I kept meaning to get out there and do a, Yo, Mick! With the Billy Idol. Yeah. Who, I mean, Rocky was first, obviously. Who did that lip first, you think? Like Marlon Brando or something? I mean, it's stolen, right? I mean, Rocky's a genius. I mean, well, his name's not even Rocky in real life. Sly Stallone. Did you ever watch the sh- the movie about arm wrestling that he was in? Of course. Over, over the, the top. top. Yes! Look, I'm about to flip my hat around. I and did he it. knew he meant business because he was try- just trying to get his kid back. That was an intense premise and for then a movie. He was in... He was in the competition. He was beating all those huge guys. And then they would flip back to his kid. And his yeah. kid was beating kids in the playground. And John Brzezink was actually in that. Oh, I just did it again. It's okay. I wasn't offended by it that time. I was pointing. You just stopped your own flow. <sighs> I'm just working on stuff. Yeah, I'm, This January, February, like I'm trying to, I want to change a little bit. But that's okay. We yeah. should always, always want to change. It's hard when you get... That's why winter is so great, because you actually have the time to think and to change. Oh, my God. I've had too much time. 
too much time on my hands. But this is something we talked about, too. The three Ps. Oh, here we go. Okay. Now we're back to our yep. notes. We're back to our three Ps. <laughs> and our three Ps are as follows. You down Doing with PPP? Something. Yeah, you know me. You down? This could be a... <laughs> this is going to be a new hit. Doing something or thinking about something profound, provocative, and productive. Wrong order. Fine. You tell them the order you want to say it Profound, productive, provocative. provocative. Okay. Well, I just think that you said something like, this is the way we live our lives on Yopo. Oh, yeah. That's true, though. As Yopoers. Yopoes? Yopoists. Yopoists. I love it. Yopoets. Yopo. Yo, yo po- poets. Yeah, okay. Yo, yeah, yo poets. I'm into that. You know this is all organic, guys. We just come up with whatever we think is cool at the time. Well, it's fun. It is fun. Um, and it's a beautiful day outside. And it when is. when it's sunny, you come up with good stuff. When it's when it's cloudy, or sometimes you're just I don't know. Right. When I lived in Illinois, I had I definitely had some profoundly sad times because it's so gray there for like four or five months out of the year it's really what is that debilitating emotionally what's that called that it's like a syndrome sad seasonal affective disorder Mm -hmm. wow how many spelling bees have you won Mm, one (laughs) (laughs) how'd you know (laughs) i've won zero i also won the mclean county geography bee in fifth grade just when you didn't think there was any other kind of bees, there was a geography bee. Yeah. Queen bee. <laughs> so, okay. So our three Ps. We Perf- co- yeah. Per- see, and I said profound needed to be first. Yeah. Because it does sound kind of snooty. I know, but I don't think that, I don't think that it needs to be. Because point, I think the point, whole. You just pointed it. The me. whole point is that. You need to think deeply about things in a way that is meaningful to you. Not that you have to come up with some profound proclamation about life necessarily. Mm -hmm. It's just a way of operating, I would say. Yeah, I mean, well, think before you think, thinking about something, not too much, because some of us think too much, but. Both of us think too much. It's fine. Yeah. Um, oh, don't overthink it. But sure. roll it around. Yeah. Noodle Practice. it. Noodle it. Yeah. Practice it or... I remember my boy, Ryan Baggett. Shout out to Ryan Baggett. He's a fun, he's a fun guy. He's interesting. He always said to me, if you're going to do a story on Instagram, do one and then... St- Delete it and then do it again and delete it and do it again. Don't even save them. Don't even just keep doing it. Practice it. Do you feel like Instagram stories are what we're talking about when we discuss things that are profound, profound. though? No, no. But I think I because do th- that was also something we discussed too is social the, media the trap of social media in the winter time. I haven't been doing very well on social media these days. Just a thing. Cycle. But that's okay. I'm I mean, cycling. I would rather know that someone's going through a hard time by talking with them in person than seeing some shady stuff yeah. on Instagram or Facebook. Shadowgram. That makes it seem like my friends, my friends Chrissy and Corinne, shout out, call it cropping out the sadness. Not showing us. Right, which basically just means that you're posting things that make your life seem amazing, and then when you actually talk to the person, you realize that it's super not amazing. Mm. Well, I mean, social media should be... I feel like I see a lot of positive stuff, but a lot of it is kind of like coming from a sad place lately. I think everybody... I think everybody gets down a little bit in the winter, and then I think... But I do think it's part of... Being human is like, then all of a sudden you spring out in the yeah, spring. Yeah, definitely. And, you're all, and you get all sprung and, and sprunt. That's why... What is seas- sprunt? That's not a word, but that's, but... but that's why seasonal affective disorder kind of exists too, I think. Just because, again, back to the idea that 
you have to regenerate. And in order to do that, you kind of have to stay in like a stasis for a second. Stasis. Stasis. I mean, you can't, we, we don't, we don't really hibernate. No. We just keep going. We, there's no cryogenics here. No. We're not, fro- we're not free. We're not we're Walt not like, Disney's head. Is he, is it frozen? No, that's an urban legend though. <laughs> <laughs> Never know with that guy. True. Walter Elias Disney. I'll be visiting his world in a few weeks, oh, yeah, which is very there. exciting for me. Gonna go see all the Star Wars stuff. Gonna go to Toy Story Land. So excited. I saw the documentary on how they made Toy Story. Okay. And it was insane. Yeah? Pixar is the real deal. For sure. That's a big team. Definitely. They they made the thing, and they had the whole thing all... Like, the technology was changing as they were doing it, and they were changing it. And yeah. that's some crazy technology. That's amazing. Talk about productive. Or just production. Yeah, true. Yeah. They scrapped the whole thing, and then they, re- they remade it. They, they, even the story, I think, wasn't, like, good enough. That's cool. Toy Story, the original Toy Story. That's, I mean, that's a pretty big... It's pretty big, Toy Story. Oh, pretty big? Yeah, I mean, there's been four of them, so <laughs> definitely pretty big. There, but there's been five Rockies, so yeah. And, and now they just... Six, yeah, right? Well, yeah, but... Because there was Rocky Five. No, did anyone then, watch Rocky Six? If you did, no, will you please No, but Creed was it? good. Creed and Creed Two were good, though. They were? Yeah, Michael B. Jordan. Hell yeah. I know. God, if your name was Michael Jordan, like, jeez. You got to add a B in the middle. <laughs> Right. Or something like right. that. Just like... Um, Michael J. Fox? No, uh, I can't talk about what I was just about to talk about. I was talking about if there's two, like, um, Samanthas in the room, and you decide you want to call one Samantha. Oh. Yeah. So Anyway, that wasn't very funny. But, I mean, we're talking about... Jevin made a... Joke. No, 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 we're not. No. That Devin made a joke. It may have flopped. been in it may have been in poor taste flopped. at that time. Yeah. A, an apology was issued. Yeah. But that's that's life. Who hasn't said something that Yeah. I mean in the la- in the last pod in the last Yopo we were talking about I was talking about how how I've said a lot of unsavory things to my kids family, et cetera. And I know you all have, and I, and I just want to let you know that if you have, tell us about it. Maybe it's funny to us. I don't know. Maybe, Maybe. we can laugh. Maybe we yeah. can laugh about it. But we were talking, when we were talking about this episode of Yopo, we were talking about one specific topic. Connection. That is very profound. Connection. And that's discussing the meaning of life. Oh, which is a right. huge topic in general. Well, it is, it is. But but right away you came back with connection, which I think kind of is is bigger. I mean, obviously the meaning of life. I mean, haven't we all like stared at our hand or mm-hmm. did you ever thought have about a- how weird something about your body is? Oh yeah, definitely. Like I was telling. <laughs> I don't know if I should really even say this, but I'm going to say it. <laughs> say it. Saying something like, haven't you ever like jumped up on the counter and like stood up on the counter in your bathroom? And they were like, Jevin, stop. And I was like, you know, and you're, you're looking, and you're, you put your head between your legs and you're looking in the mirror. I mean, sure, I guess. Hopefully not. Why do you have to jump on the counter to do that? Can you just get a compact mirror? Or like a smaller mirror? You lost me with that one. I know. It's, it's fine. Just, li- just, li- just, just leave it there. But I think what you said about hurting your family is still in line with connection in general because sometimes we lash out and kind of want to cut those connections a little bit. Well, the meaning of life, like I think a lot of people think... A lot, I think for a lot of people, they think it means the meaning of life is to have kids or 
the meaning of life is to meet your soulmate or the meaning of life is to make a million dollars or go to Machu Picchu, like but do a do a thing. But all those things are you're either connecting with people or you're connecting with nature. Correct. Or things or, or whatever money, it is. Money? Yeah. To get to Machu Picchu? Sure. But that you can't climb anymore. You can still connect with it. What are the little people called, the little porters that go up to Everest? Sherpa. Sherpa. Mm-hmm. Right. Tenzing Norgay. Is he one of the dudes? He is. The Tenzings, I think, are like a very storied Sherpa family. Are they like griots in Africa that are the well, musicians and comedians? Sure. Yeah. But that's, I mean, that's the really sad part about that is in Nepal, I think that that is a job you don't get profession. to choose it. yeah you don't you your family ch- you no that's not where i was going with that i was going to say <laughs> that it is really like a way out of complete destitution in that area uh, like, that's definitely a way to start making them stacks stacks on stacks on well Racks. in comparison to being in a to being living like a tent, in a, a refugee, a yeah. farmer yeah, or right. something. And a farmer in a place with no irrigation and no, uh, no corn. But connection is a very interesting way to think about the meaning of life because, like you said, some people connect with humans. I think that we both are in that category, I would say. Some people connect with animals better. Some people connect with animals better, definitely. Because... Are you about to say people suck? No. Oh. I I don't I don't know what it is in in people who connect more with animals cuz that's not where I'm at in my life. Do you think that it goes back hundreds and hundreds of years of like maybe that that Neanderthal traveling with that early dog, the early human, the early dog? Could be. Companionship or like when okay. Maybe it's an inter- agriculture and domestication of animals, yeah. like in the post, what? I don't know what I'm talking. Panzaniac, Panzawoic, Danza <laughs> Paleic. <laughs> Tony Danza. <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe it too has to do with introversion and extroversion. I think most everyone has bits of both of those things. They call them ambiverts if you're kind of a mix of both, but which is not a real term, but. Um, it's not? Well, I think it is now. I mean, what isn't a word now? Sprunt. Sprunt. Okay. Scun- We're back to that. Scunion. Again. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> but don't you think it's a little bit to do with if you're an introvert or an extrovert, depending on you what think, you relate you th- to more? You think a lot of introverts relate to just like the companionship of animals better and extroverts like to mix it up with people and sure. talk? Yeah. Or maybe not animals necessarily, but animals, books, music, movies. Facebook. Well, I don't know. The social media thing is tough for me. It's a tough sell. Because I think that now people use it for promotion, which really isn't it. It wasn't its intention initially. It probably was a long term goal for it. Oh, yeah. Obviously, because now sponsored ads have kind of taken over sure. uh, social media. Like, you know, I mean, every time I turn on YouTube now, there's this person, I'm not even going to mention who it is, that's just taken over every ad stop. I don't like it anymore. All I mute it every time. I don't listen to it. Yeah. But how many people have you connected with from your past Using Facebook a lot, right? Um, I would say it's that's definitely the easiest way to do it. I think it's pretty cool. Definitely. If you're using it for that. I made a Facebook friend recently um, who was actually a legitimate person I wanted to get to know better. And not just someone who wanted to sell me something. Like someone- you're using it like Tinder. No. Not a da- not in a dating sense. Oh, like a Neil deGrasse Tyson kind of thing. Sure. Someone you wanted to get to know better that you am- admired from afar, but not romantically. Correct. Huh. 
So someone who I thought had interesting views on things, who I had a lot in common with, and right. I just kind of threw caution to the wind and friended said person on Facebook. Mm. And it went oh, from there. Yeah. And we did have a lot in well, common. Well, and then sometimes you can do that, and then they accept your friend request, and their page is private, and then you scroll down, and you're like, whoa, unfollow. Yeah. I find that with a lot of people who friend me, to be honest. Because I try to keep my Facebook and social media... Connection and division is something I think but social is media is really guilty of, of. Oh, definitely. It's a byproduct of, you know, it's Facebook is supposed to bring us all together. And, and really what it's done is given everyone a voice. Yes. And the We've minute talked about you re- that in the, the past, minute you re- too. Yeah, about be- everyone's famous. Yeah. About, like, what We're is... We're hoping to be. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Like, oh, my God, all those Instagram... Oh, my God, all those people who have their own podcast now. Ugh. Yeah, like, oh, my God, it's just two people talking. About their thoughts. Yeah. And thought processes. Well, but, you know, part of connecting, though, is realizing that we're all kind of the same. And as, and to quote Father John Misty, each other's all we got. It's so true. That's a great line in the song Pure, Com- uh, Pure Comedy. Which is comedy. I feel like don't watch the video though. Okay, fair enough. I feel like don't watch the video because I feel like I just don't. It's 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 one of the to me p- p- pure comedy. The song or the album. You know, I know that he he gets out there on the microphone and says a lot of stuff that other that that. that half the people in the world don't agree with. Mm -hmm. But that song, Pure Comedy, is pretty good. I don't care who you are. But you connect with that song. I do connect with that song. Right. I do. um, I do connect with a lot of the humor in the beginning about um, uh, all humans being iron deficient and... uh, the hips are too. The, the head is too big for the hips, you know, and the hips. And then, um, one per one person, I guess the man is out hunting, and he comes back and says, um, "We can switch when I come back, and I'll take care of the baby." Did you catch that in the song? I'm not a good lyric person. I'm no. I'm the worst. I could listen to a song like Panama by Van Halen all my life, and I still don't know the words. (laughs) What are you talking about, dude? Maybe nothing. That's fine. Here she comes for a thousand times. What are you saying? David Lee Roth, if you're listening right now, I just want to know what you're saying. But ultimately, another important aspect of avoiding... Being in the darkness of winter is making sure that what you're thinking about and what you're doing is at least sort of productive. Don't you think? I do. I mean, I still think you need to take care of yourself. I I still think you need to, you know, go down to the beach or, or go on a bike ride or go to Healthy Habit. Thank you for... Thank you for sponsoring. Thank you for sponsoring. They actually have a really great deal there right now, Um, a healthy eating situation. Oh, yeah. You're touching your face again, just like Lynn Hummel said. No, she did. (laughs) Good thing this isn't being filmed. Jeez. Well, I had an itch, and then I I forgot my beard is kind of... It looks exactly like my beard did this time last year when I did did a podcast with Jordan Ross from The Roasting Room. Yeah. My beard is the exact same length. I almost put on the exact same sweatshirt. There can only be one. I know, one podcast. One podcast to rule them all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tell us really quickly about going to see Funk You at Victory North and your <gasps> upcoming exciting Oh, yeah. Johnny so Mercer. this is something that I, we talked last time about New Year's, as I like to call them, reflections. And so in 2019, at the beginning of 2019, I said to myself, Something that feeds my soul and that connects me and grounds me with myself is going to see live music. And so as a result, 
in 2019, I kind of made it my resolution at that time to go see more live music throughout the year. Because I would constantly just make excuses for why I couldn't go to something that I was excited about and whatnot. And so I just kind of started buying concert tickets. I went to a show in Atlanta. I visited a friend there. It was a great weekend. Went to D.C. And not only did I just the make the decision to do it, but I also made the decision to kind of do it on my own. And that, I feel like, really... This is going a lot deeper than I thought it would, but made me more confident in who I was and able to kind of go about the world on my own. A lot of people say to me all the time, I would come see you play, but I don't have anyone to come see you. I say that to you sometimes. Well, I mean, and so many people have, and I always, I've introduced a lot of people yeah. into the little wacky, um, the world of of Bluffton and Hilton Head's music scene. Yeah. Because I, I don't, I don't want to call it necessarily my crowd or Gary's crowd or, or you know, Unicorn Meat's crowd or Shaky Bones crowd because I feel like a lot of those people, to bring it back to what you're saying, go see all the bands. Yeah. And, you know, as a musician, you want them to tell you, oh, you're my favorite. Yeah. Jeff, and you're my favorite. That's not always true. It's and and uh, one of my friends, Mike Corbar, last year went to see Iron Maiden alone. Yeah. But that's cool. I mean, but but that's cool, and and that's something I probably need to do. I I don't think I've ever. I uh, guess full disclosure, I didn't go to the concerts by myself, but I have gone to concerts by myself. But before. you made the trip. Yeah, for sure. You bought the you bought and the I've, ticket. I did activities solo. When I was there, too, not for sure <laughs> knowing <laughs> what I was going to do. But I think that it really does build your confidence in that something that makes you feel connected to something is worth doing, even if there's no one else to do it with you. Yeah, I mean, I think I talked on the podcast before about, hey, man, hey. I saw you running out there, dude. Was it you or the the uh, Jevin doppelganger? I'm going to run with you, man. Oh, you mean the biker guy? The yeah. guy on the bike? <laughs> the guy looks nothing like me. I, I actually spoke to him the other day. You did? The guy with the magenta bike. From afar, the, I think he does. He does, maybe. I think he looks more like Person G on Hilton Head, but hey, Person G, how you doing? But um, I said, hey, man. And that was it. We didn't really speak, but but uh, I think you know. I think live music is mostly always it's a lot of there's a lot of people watching too. To go, oh, to definitely, on. especially at Funk U. Right. So I went Victory to North. see I went to see uh, a band called Funk U. They're from Augusta, Georgia. I went to see them at Victory North in Savannah, and. It was super fun because I kind of left my natural cynicism at the door and just grooved for like three hours to some funk music. Um, they did a James Brown, or sorry, Rick James Brown New Year's Eve. Oh, yeah, which was Rick so James fun. Brown. That's cool. I had, that's it was the first, so fun. That's the first time I've picked up on the combination of those two names. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, but that's, that's fun. And I mean, okay. So James Brown only has one good song. But I mean the style of music. What? Coming to America. Oh, my God. Don't tell me they did that. No. Well, I mean, not Rocky when I was did, there. Rocky did it. Rocky what? Which one? Uh, three. Nope. Four. Two, it was four? Mm -hmm. No way. Yes. When Apollo comes out, that's his walkout song. And then he dies. Spoiler Jeez. alert. <laughs> Apollo Creed dies. Sorry, if Carl Weathers. If you haven't seen Rocky IV, you're not allowed to listen to this podcast. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for multiple reasons, mostly because you cannot be friends with me if you haven't seen Rocky IV. Carl Weathers should have been in the Man Crush song, dude. Yeah, he's in the Mandalorian. I know. Did you Did you watch the Mandalorian? No. But you know he's in it. Yeah, because I saw the press. And Werner Herzog. It has a really strange cast of people in it. It does, and it also has the the ex-UFC fighter. Gina Carano. Yes. Yep. Mm-hmm. 
beast. She does not even look like herself in that show, though. In the in the Mandalorian, yeah. It also has um, Amy Sedaris is in it and Bill Burr. It's such a random assortment of people because it, those are like comedy heavy hitters. That I are saw in them all in, in kind of a round table discussion, yeah. and I thought, whoa, I love it. It was. I mean, it's a great show for sure. It's a show. Yeah, it's a show. It's like a. So it's on Disney Plus. Oh, Thank you for your sponsorship. <laughs> yeah, geez. just kidding. They Disney. could sponsor us. They got money to burn. But the Mandalorian, I guess there was some backlash after the Mandalorian season ended that all these people were canceling their account. <laughs> they didn't mention the fact that I, for example, have Disney Plus for free right now because I have Verizon Unlimited. <laughs> but whatever. People want to be dramatic. It's fine. Why were they canceling their memberships? Because that the only reason they had it was because of the Mandalorian. Ooh. Yeah. Whoa. Big Star Wars people. Yeah. Big, big Star Wars people. I guess if... I yeah. saw that since the last time we spoke, too. You saw Star the Wars. The new Star Wars movie. Oh, you did? Rise of Skywalker. I've actually seen several movies. Little Women. Ooh, crushed my soul. But talk about connecting with a movie. I have never cried so much in a movie than when I saw that. I've only, the only thing I've seen is Dolomite. Oh, and that's on Netflix. Yeah. Eddie Murphy. Saw it months ago. It got me through one. It got me through a hard night one night where I stayed up till like three in the morning watching Dolomite. And then when the movie ended, I was kind of like, kind of like when I watched the Saturday Night Live with Eddie Murphy in it. I was kind of yeah. like, uh, it's not the same. But we've talked about that before too. How comedians kind of eventually just lose their edge naturally just because they aren't at the forefront anymore and aren't well, kind of young. But Seinfeld, I don't feel, has lost it. And I don't know if Eddie Murphy has necessarily lost it. I just kind of feel like I'm going to have to wait till he does a stand-up. Fair enough. Like, Chappelle just got the Mark Twain Award. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you ever watched any of those acceptance speeches, but Eddie Murphy's is, like, hilarious when he, accept yeah. when he accepted his a few years ago. And Dave Chappelle smokes in the building. And he, sa he talks about how powerful he is because he can smoke in a, in a building. Yeah. Which, that's illegal. Yes, everywhere. But every time I see Chappelle with a cigarette in his hand, he's not funny to me. Hmm. I don't know what it is about them cigs. Former cig smoker here. Yeah, well, I think. I think that's maybe the hardest thing to quit. I quit cold turkey, sort of. I still sometimes dabble. I mean, as long as it's an American spirit, I think you're fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> Who's the hipster now? Dude, I don't really smoke cigarettes. I smoke American spirits. <laughs> <laughs> The only uh, thing I mess around with is the American spirit. You know what ooh. I mean? Hmm. Connecting with our ancient ancestors. Ancient. <laughs> our well, I our think culture could never be described as ancient in the America? United States. Well, well I think I was talking some cultures can. I was going back to talking about like the dogs or the T Rex arms. Oh yeah. T Rex arms. I love yeah. T Rex arms jokes. So <laughs> did I send you that meme? I don't know. Oh, my gosh. I think, I think I saved it for you, even if I didn't send it to you. And it's a joke about how T-Rex, T-Rexes can't hug or can't hug not because they have short arms, but because they are dead. That's right. You did send <laughs> that to me. Yeah. That was before you sent me that weird bird meme about how. Yeah, but that's birds cool. Are, no, I mean, birds are, birds are, di are the present. They are the direct ancestors yeah. of dinosaurs. All dinosaurs had feathers. Well, not all. Not Triceratops, because he's too much of a badass. Who, what's your favorite dinosaur out there? What's your favorite dinosaur? Mine? Yeah, I, everyone has a favorite dinosaur, I mean, right? obviously Triceratops, because it has my name in it. Doi. Oh, Triceratops. That could be your new podcast moniker. <laughs> <laughs> Triceratops. I'm not going to tell you what Sarah's doing now. <laughs> you can guess, though. I mean, everyone likes T-Rex, but then I think, didn't we find out that there was a Supersaurus that could eat a T-Rex? And that T-Rex wasn't quite as large as everyone thought? It's like when we found out Pluto wasn't a planet anymore. It's just really crushing. It is. It's kind of, it's just kind of, you're kind of like, wait, what? 
Wait, what? Yeah. There's not nine planets anymore? Just but say then it, there I guess. but then dwarf planets. Oh yeah, true. Thank you. We keep changing the game, which is fine. You know, shouldn't we always move the bar to a different place? Whether it's backwards, forwards, up, down. Maybe next podcast we could talk about in a parallel universe, what would this podcast be like? Ooh, yeah. You would be you would be a musician. Okay. And what I would, would be, be I would be a marketing person for uh I would I would I would I and I would have to organize all your crazy ideas. Okay. What else? I love organizing your crazy ideas though. <laughs> it's so fun. Today's the farmers market day. It is. You're right. It's Thursday. And today, farmers market in Bluffton. Which if you again if you are not from here <laughs> I don't know why I just but you come to Bluffton to visit for any reason. Um, either to visit me, shout out to my friends, Kristen O'Brien, here's here's looking at you, kid. Oh, is she coming to visit you soon and then go to Disney World? No, so my friend Kristen, actually, this was pretty funny, probably like four or five months ago, she <laughs> said to me, hey, I know this is really far away, but I might be in Charleston in December of 2020. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> and I was like, okay, cool. See you in a year and a half. <laughs> I might be in the Northern Hemisphere in 2030. <laughs> right. But it was kind of great. Well, unfortunately, like I say to people a lot, they, they always say to me, ah, I need to come out and catch your act. And I, sell, I just say to them, this goes back to our goals and our, and our connectivity. Just try to do it once. Just try to do this thing that you want to do one time this year. Yeah. People, I people think, yeah, think, set your goals at a reasonable level for sure. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I think, I think because I make, I make myself well. I I crank a lot of stuff out. True. I've been. Ooh, cranking. this is a good segue. Can we talk about your fun song? Oh sure, yeah, yeah. About sharks are our homies. <laughs> sharks are our homies. <laughs> 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 Sharks are our homies, a guardian of the sea. Why are you singing that voice, Jevin? That's what his dad said when he heard the song. Because you are, I mean, it is like a very, it's kind of a cute voice that it you is. sing in. Yeah. <laughs> it is. And I, I was, I was sort of challenged to write a song about sharks, and I thought to myself, "Wow, that's really hard. That's going to be really hard." And then I was talking to the homie, Connor Holyfield. Shout out Jerry. Shout out to Jerry. Shout out Jerry. His mom. Who, You're listening. Who's looking pretty fit these days? I'll just say that. Pure bar, Jerry. It's working. Hair looked really shiny last time I saw you at our sponsor, the Juice Hive. And I was talking to the homie, Connor Holyfield, and he was like, all right, man, you're the homie. And he, Connor, is a young lad who used to be in the band Sonder Blue, who's playing in the area around here. And uh, I was in the shower, and I had this moment where I thought, sharks are our friends. Sorry, Jaws scared the crap out of all of us. And made us think, I mean, if you think to yourself, sharks must kill a lot of people every year. This is sure. the whole, this is my whole, the whole reason I was able to crank this song out. Thank you, Kyle, at Shelter Studios for doing such a great job. And thank you to our sponsor, iTunes and YouTube, for putting that song out on and Spotify as well. But Who's Kyle? Just kidding, Kyle. I know who you are. We just haven't met yet. Right. Sh Kyle of pretty darn fame. Sold out the roast room five times so far. Anyway, when I found out that coconuts killed more people than sharks, I, that was it for me. And then I read about how great they are at storing carbon in their bodies instead of an animal dying and, and, and disappearing into the, the, what's it called down there? The muck. Yeah. The carbon... We would we would rather see the carbon go into the sharks' bodies. Cool. And that's uh, so it, cool. Is it? Yes. Oh, okay, I thought you were pa patronizing me. No, 
That's very yeah. cool. It is cool. I mean, if I were patronizing you, I would say nice. Right, and then I would probably say like, oh my god, OMG. <laughs> but the so- writing, I think, I think, I think, just like writing something down and looking at it, like last night, I wrote down, if you ever want to be little again, let me know to my kids. Yeah. You know, and that that's kind of a sad little thing, but I think. I think it's cool too, and I and I really do think that if you're talking about things with a friend or just writing something down and going solo on it and looking at it, you will it will heal it'll heal you a little bit. It's therapeutic, or you just cut, might learn something. Sure, in whatever about. way you want to do that, because for example, you might write a song about it. I might. You might, but another person might. Um, you like know, you said, talk to a friend. Yeah, it might, you know, I think I think early in the morning I'm always trying to say these um what's our first P? Profound. Mm-hmm. We're always I'm always trying to say these really profound things to my kids. Yeah. About, hey, school is the is the school is the is the it's free and it's the ticket to you having a job one day that you like. Because if you have a good, if you have a job you like, you might like your life more, and you True. might be able to get that Jeep that you want a blue Jeep. Does one of your kids want a blue Jeep? No. Oh, okay. I was just thinking about a blue Mustang. Oh, okay. Gotcha. And then I started thinking about a blue Jeep because around here people like that Jeep life. Mm-hmm. Like, Jeep life. Shout out to Dave Peck from the Backyard Restaurant who might actually be our sponsor one day. You never know. Yeah. Ooh, bad biscuit. Mm. Oh man, mm. never had it, but I could only imagine. So good. Because I'm on that lentil diet. Shout out to Jason Kendall and his and his wife up in Pittsburgh. They're on that lentil diet now. Lentils and rice, man. I know. Anyway, guys. If you have any suggestions about a theme for next time or something else that you would like us to talk about for the next Yopo, please let us know in the comments after we post this on both Instagram, Facebook, etc. Catch us on Spotify. I'm going to work with Jevin. Anchor FM and Stike Sticker. S-T-I. Stitcher. Stitcher. I'm going to get with this man and try to figure out how to upload this to iTunes. They actually recommend that you have three in the hopper anyway before you upload. Oh, so, it's cool. oh, so you've already yeah. done some research. Good, because I'm not helping. You are helping. <laughs> you are at least going to have the account for us to do it. All right. Well, I already do. I already do have Remember? it. Remember? Yeah. When you fall into that trap on social media, though, in the winter, even your friend at Machu Picchu is not better than you. We're all the same. We're all the We're same. All, sometimes, Just you know, trying to connect with whomever or whatever we can to make ourselves feel better. I mean, you can be coasted along for 10 years, 20 years, and then something, something not so savory might happen to you. And, uh, you know, good luck out there. Start. We know you can do it. Good luck out there, Skywalker. We'll see you next time. I'll be back.